Hey everybody and Happy New Year to you. Uh, this is Sheldon and uh, we're going to keep these videos going. Um, they're fun. I enjoy them and with technology they're easy to do. And Corey likes it. We do whatever Corey says. We're going to dedicate this video to Margarita Gosha. And I'm going to call her Gosha because she said I can. And uh, she lives in Germany and she's been corresponding with me, just kind of texting me on uh, Facebook. And uh, it's been great. You know, it's really nice hearing from people from all over the world. And we have a certain luxury here because we've been taught by the industry pros, which I have since I was 13. And um, I know that, you know, people like Vilpu, who is my mentor, you know, is teaching around the country and around the world, which is a wonderful thing. I don't do that because I own a school and it's really important to me at the school and university to have consistency to be there right on that schedule and I love my students so if they need something I want them to know that on that day and that time uh, when they show up that I'm there I don't always have the answers but we have experience which is I think one of the things I want to make sure that we understand is that what I'm going to show you and we're going to have some fun with it comes from experience it doesn't mean we're smarter it just means we've been there and uh, I think that's one of the important sayings that we have amongst my colleagues is we're not smarter just been there just having some experience of having done it and failed and do it again and that's um, kind of what we can bring to you um, I want this to kind of be kind of an addition to what I did on the uh, new masters and uh, so that we can continue to to get that study out there uh, the difference is that uh, uh, this is free and it's for you and it's a gift and I hope you enjoy it and I hope I can continue to uh, to shed some light let me know what you need send Corey some uh, emails or texts and uh, mostly emails and let him know what you need and uh, I hope we'll get it to you Okay, again, these are very easy to do because I can do them in my home, in my studio. This one, I'm not going to put my headphones on. I'm going to guide you and show you. And uh, we're going to stay with the fundamentals and anatomy. And uh, But when we show you those fundamentals, they are directly uh, they're directly tied to the industry, directly tied to on the job. In order to do on the job, you must have been on the job. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Uh, where we're going to start... Is what Gosha's question was, is how do you do the cross-hatching from the Renaissance? And it's really not cross-hatching. It's cross-contour. So if you can see on this Gru's drawing right here, you can see where he's really feeling the form, and he's drawing over the form. It looks like cross-hatching because he's going down the form and across the form. And um, so in order to do that, you need to know what you're drawing. And that's where the anatomy comes in. So I'm going to do a pretty, you're going to draw a pretty girl. Uh, where it really comes down to is one of the oldest companies. Uh, and, you know, we're talking about business all the time. And people are business. But one of my favorite companies, been around for over 500 years, is back in the Renaissance We when we took breaks. You know, myself and my buddies, you know, and Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci, I could. I just walked in their shadows. Uh, I was never as good as they were, but I loved just being able to study with them. They were such nice people. Leonardo da Vinci, of course, was uh, very much into his science and his art. Rubens, oh, he was incredible because he was a diplomat. He was a salesman. He was uh, a great painter, great draftsman. Very much what we use in the animation today comes from Rubens. But the one thing they all had in common is when we went on our breaks, we went to the mall, and we used to get pretzels. Well, we buy our pretzels to eat from, like, the other pretzel places. Um, but the one place that we used to love to hang out was Pretzel Spot. And there was a saying, Pretzel Spot is hot, because these are the people that used to wait in line at Pretzel Spot. And if you notice, they're perfect. They have these amazing, flawless bodies, as I do myself. I just like to hide it behind T-shirts and fat. Um... And they had these amazing bodies. And the wonderful thing about Pretzel Spot is we could all touch the bodies because that's why they were there. Because otherwise, why are you at Pretzel Spot? We, of course, were known artists, so nobody touched us. Um, 
you know, except for me, they had to pay a lot of money. Um, but in this case, if you notice the rhythms, they really they have these beautiful rhythms. So anatomy is all about rhythm. Uh, I've had doctors in my class and boy, they really know their anatomy, but they don't draw good. <laughs> so um, just to know your anatomy does not make you an artist. It just makes you know your anatomy. And we only need to know a few. And um, so in this case, uh, if you look at the anatomy, and this was sculpted by uh, one of the artists I've read, uh, New Masters. This is beautiful work. And if you notice, the, the, the styrations are actually your cross contours. So if you just take the pencil and follow these rhythms that are on the muscles, now you have your cross contours, which is your what Gosha was asking for, which was the way of shape, you know, rendering and getting the cross hatching. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a face, and I'm going to put in a lot of those. But I'm going to do a very subtle, pretty girl, and, uh, and you'll see. But you see how everything fits and all these beautiful rhythms. But the cross hatching is already in the anatomy. Okay. So uh, the wonderful thing today is that. Uh, you know, pretzel spot still exists in my mind, and it's still uh, a reality within my non-reality. And, um, and there we go. You see how it works? So you can see it again in here, how Gruz is copying. He's not copying. He's describing the form and drawing all around and over it. It's, that's what we're doing. So pretzel spot is hot, and at pretzel spot, we get to draw over the form. So it's pretty cool. All right, so let's put on a different light. These are going to be a series of videos. This isn't going to be just one um, to get this drawing done because I really want to get you guys going on this. And again, it's not that we're world-renowned anatomists or anything like that. You know, uh, for me, it just means that I'm um, just had the wonderful experience to be there. Uh, the rhythm chart, which everybody's loving, um, the Riley. I got to learn that directly from Fred Fixler. And the rhythm chart is just your anatomy. So it doesn't necessarily mean that the Riley is the end all. It's just part of, and I, I like Riley. We teach it at my school, but we don't make it the total, you know. Um, the closest I've seen to the total would be uh, Vilpu. He really combines it all. So let's take a look. Let's have a seat. And uh, we're going to start with the lay in. And I have my lights, and here we go. Okay. I wish I could put music in the background, but Corey says no. First thing you guys want to do is we're going to slow it down. Uh, one thing I want to explain to you, and I'm going to explain this to my class. There's two different kinds of actors that I was trained. You have your character actor, and then you have your, you know, like your regular actor, like... You know, there's some actors, you know, you get to know them personally, as I, you know, had the luxury of doing with, with um, some wonderful actresses um, when I used to teach years ago. And when you, and I can't mention names, I wish I could, but when you see her uh, on, the, on the screen, she's exactly the way she is in real life. So when they hire her, they're hiring basically... Uh, her to play that part. Um, then you have your character actors and actresses, and that's where you know you see them in different movies, and they're like totally different people. And if I was a live action actor, I would want to be a character actor because I love playing the different personalities and kind of freaking out the class. So as we move on through, you know, these lectures and stuff. Um, if I play a character, I'm playing the character. That doesn't mean that I am like that. Um, I like edgy humor. I like edgy, the, the humor that kind of wakes you up. And uh, so that's kind of where it's at. So again, in this case, we're going to be more of a character type actor. A lot of times what I see uh, in acting, just I want to fall asleep. So we kind of wake you up. All right. So pretzel spot is hot. Um, if you're at the airport, you're waiting in line to get a burger and there's somebody in standing in front of you and you think they're kind of hot, don't feel them. Because then you're gonna be, you know, on your way to uh, airport security. 
Uh, they do have nice coffee and airport security. Of course, you know, with my narratives, I usually end up in that security. It's nice, uh, but you're better off at the gate. And sometimes you can miss your flight if they don't realize you're just teaching drawing. And, you know, they keep asking you those questions. So um, you're better off feeling it on your paper, which is what we're doing right now. So the first thing we want to do is called the graphic footprint. And this is really crucial. Let's see if you guys can see it. This is your graphic footprint. Yeah, there you go. And what this is doing is it's, uh, it's telling you where, where does this figure, where does this exist on your, uh, on your paper and also on the screen. Because remember, as artists, we're doing this for a reason. And it, you know, it's generally, and that's why, again, I'm saying this, look at the people who are teaching you, look at their background, see what they've done. Uh, a lot of people claim and it's, it's fine, I don't have a problem with it, but you know, you want it to register to the experience. So this would be you know, a movie screen, and this person has to exist here, and you have to be able to do it again and again and again, and that's sequential drawing. So we need a, a process and a procedure that will do that for you. So the first thing is your graphic footprint, and it's the shape of the face, which is this kind of a long, squarish face, and then the shape of the hair. This is kind of a triangle shape right here. When you're putting the laying down, it should be, uh, it should be about the value of a half tone. So that way you don't have to erase your laying, you can just keep putting it back in, okay? Um, so you can just keep drawing over it. Your laying consists of your proportions. It's halfway for the eyes, another halfway between the eyes, so from the top of the head to the chin is halfway for the eyes. Then from the top of the, from the top of the head, you know, there's your eyes, and from your eyes to your chin is your nose halfway. Then halfway between your nose and your chin is your mouth. So it's half, half, half. You're one eye apart, including cartoon characters. So cartoon characters are also one eye apart. You're five eyes across. Okay. The end of your nostrils line up with your tear duct. The end of your mouth lines up to the center of your eye, and your eye is one quarter. The size of your eye is one quarter. Okay? And um, your end of your mouth lines up with the corner of your jaw. And if you're smiling, your fangs lined up with your tear, your fangs of your, you know, when you smile lines up with the nostril, which lines up with the tear duct. Um, you'll find the difference between the nationalities is the width of the hole in your skull, okay? And then your nostrils extend out from that, okay? So, you know, if it's a uh, Caucasian, it's five millimeters out. If it's a Negroid, then it's 10 millimeters out. And then if you're, you know, if it's Asian, then it's, you know, somewhere in between is what they say. Those are kind of your three areas. Um, the eyes will always be a quarter. It's pretty cool. Then it comes down to the nasal bones. This is your nasal bone here. And this is your nasal aperture here. And then you have your nasal spine here. The uh, two-cylinder is going to determine a lot of ethnicities. The female is going to have a rounder chin and kind of a, a rounder cranium, a little smaller. And then um, the male will have a squared off chin and a little bit wider in the cranium. That's to hold all the hot air. And um, that's about it, okay? So this has been 14 minutes. We're gonna stop, so take a look at this. And then we're gonna come back and move on to the rhythm chart. So that's what I want to do. I want to start getting this information out there for you guys. So when I am demoing for you, you can see how it's applied all the time. So <clears throat> this series of uh, videos is, is dedicated to Gosha. And uh, you sound charming. I had her send me a recording so I know how to pronounce her name. And she sounds charming. Okay. All right. Let's move on to the rhythm chart.